The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I once asked a group of high school students to talk to me a little bit about their favorite saints. And I got the answers that you would typically expect. St. Francis of Assisi, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Anthony, St. Dominic, most of the big name saints that we know that are venerated by the church throughout the year. But then I challenged them and I said, now I want you to think about what makes a person a saint and see if you know somebody in your own life who is a saint. And as they responded to that question, I got stories of grandparents or aunts and uncles, even friends and siblings that exhibited the qualities of sainthood. And that, brothers and sisters, is what this Feast of All Saints that we celebrate today is all about. It's a reminder to us that all of the faithful, all of those who are baptized into Christ are called to be saints. And this is the vision that John gives to us in our first reading from the book of Revelation when he talks about this great multitude that no one can count from every nation and every tribe and people and language who are standing before the throne of God and the Lamb wearing white robes and holding palm branches, the symbol of victory. And the white robe is that symbol and reminder of our baptism, that we are baptized in Christ and called to dwell in his kingdom forever and to worship God for all eternity, singing blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. This is what we celebrate today. And St. John also in our second reading gives us the reason as to why we celebrate and why we are called to be saints. And it is because that God has showered his great love down upon us and has called us children of God. We are his children now. And we know that when we enter into his kingdom, we will become like him and dwell with him forever. And John reminds us at the end of the reading that those who have this hope in God, this hope that we will dwell with God forever, purify themselves just as God himself is pure. And Jesus in our gospel today gives us the how He tells us how we can purify ourselves and how we can live out that life 
that makes us worthy of sainthood in the kingdom of God. He gives us the Beatitudes, which is basically the mission statement for his whole time of preaching on the, on the earth. This takes place right at the beginning of Matthew's gospel, and it really is Jesus' first public teaching that he gives to the crowds. And he tells them that if they want to inherit the kingdom of God, these are the attitudes that they need to live by. And these are the attitudes that we need to live by. And in many ways, these attitudes are countercultural. They're not the things that the world holds up as the ways to live and to attain power and prestige and fame and so on. Jesus says you have to put all of that aside to enter into God's kingdom. To be poor in spirit, to live that life of humility, that life of quiet and humble service to God. To not rejoice over wrongdoing, but to mourn with those who are wrong, to mourn with those who weep. To be meek, not arrogant or puffed up, or prideful, to hunger and thirst and work for righteousness and justice in the world, to be merciful towards others, not judgmental, not condemnational, but merciful towards others, to be pure in heart, in thought, and in word, and in deed, to be peacemakers, not people of violence, not people of war, but to build up that peace of God on earth so that all people can live in unity and in harmony. And to bear those persecutions that we may sake or that we may face for the sake of the gospel in righteousness, knowing that it is through that persecution that we become worthy to attain the kingdom of heaven. These attitudes can be challenging to live by, but God gives us the grace to do just that and the grace to be found worthy to enter into his kingdom as his children. And here's the important thing for us to remember this day. That kingdom of God is not some far-off reality that we will only enter into after our death. The kingdom of God is here and now, and we are called to work to bring about that kingdom of God on earth so that when our time for for death does come and we enter into the fullness of God's kingdom, we have already tasted its fruits and we already know what lies in store for us. We have the witness of the saints who have gone before us to help us on our journey of faith, not just the saints that the church officially recognizes, but the saints who are known maybe only to family and friends and those small groups of people, and especially the saints who are known to God alone. May we follow their witness and their example as we seek to enter the kingdom of God and to be saints in his kingdom forever. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us.